NVIDIA is the company that provides the guts behind the AI revolution, and over the last two to three earnings cycles, it has produced results that have just been astounding, the likes of which I've never even seen before. And it turns out that might actually be the problem when you set the bar at a certain level, investors bid shares up to match that level, and if you can't keep it up, they might fall. So what happened during this quarter and there is one sign that i think investors need to keep a very close eye on moving forward let's spend the next couple of minutes trying to figure that out my name is brian stoffel as of the time of this recording i do not own shares of nvidia I want to give a shout out to finchat.io for sponsoring today's video you'll see a whole lot more from them in just a minute so this was the second quarter of fiscal 2025 it's a weird calendar they've got roughly ballpark of a $3 trillion company. So revenue was up for a $3 trillion company, 122%. Any other quarter, and I'd be stopping to pause and tell you how ridiculous this is that large companies can't grow this fast. They're doing the impossible, except this is the third or fourth quarter in a row where this has been the case. So take that for what it is. It still beat analyst estimates. It still came in ahead of the midpoint of management's guidance and earnings per share increased even faster. Now, let's look at margins. We'll start out by looking at gross margins, which expanded meaningfully to 75%. There will be more to come on that in just a minute. And let's also look at the company's operating margins. 62% is un unbelievable. It's ridiculous. Net margin of over 50% for a chip maker is ridiculous. It just shows you how popular and how necessary and what a big lead NVIDIA has when it comes to these AI chips. Free cash flow more than doubled to $13 billion. Same dynamics with net income. The balance sheet is in phenomenal shape. So let's go down the income statement to go over how we arrived at where we did. So we see that revenue is up 122%, but the cost of that revenue is up only 85%. I say only because that's slower than revenue growth, which is what you want to see, which is why I've coded it green. That's why gross profit was up even faster at 139%. Now, how much do you think operating expenses had to increase to get a 122% increase in revenue? The answer is only 48%. So NVIDIA continues flexing these leverage muscles, the likes of which we've really never seen before. And that's how operating income grew 174%. Net income was up 168%. And the number of shares outstanding decreased. Well, what else happened during the quarter? Well, for that, we go to finchat.io. Now, if you want to use this tool, just click the top link in the show notes below. If you want full functionality, if you subscribe to an annual plan, after clicking that link, you'll get 15% off. So I head on over to finchat.io. One of my favorite uh, tabs to go to is down here where it says segments and KPIs. I will zoom in just a little bit because I've heard some people talking about how it's hard to see. Might not fix the problem, but here we go. And what I pulled up here is where NVIDIA gets its revenue for its GPUs from. This green area right here is data centers. This blue one is gaming. The orange is professional visual, visualization, and this purple one that you can barely see at the bottom is automotive revenue. Now, what you'll notice is that about a year ago, a little over a year ago, gaming and data centers were about even. But with the onset of ChatGPT and the demand for chips for AI, we have seen this explode. And so you see that that explosion continues with the data center revenue taking home the vast majority of this. If we look at the growth rates for it, you see that data center revenue was, was growing at just 14% a year and a quarter ago. And then it just started going parabolic to 171, 278, over 400% the last two quarters. Yes, that growth rate came down, but of course it had to. It can't keep it up like that forever. And it's still up 154% when it was up 171% the year ago quarter. So just all things considered, over the last two years, the company's revenue for data centers has gone from $3.8 billion to $26.3 billion. That's crazy. Now, there is something that is worth pointing out that is a little bit more concerning, and that is gross margins. Now, why are gross margins so important? Because they are the leading indicator of whether or not a company has a moat. The, the wider your gross margin, 
the more customers are willing to pay for what you have to offer, which also kind of indicates that no one else is offering something comparable to what you have. And that's what an investment in this is based on. So if I go to margins and I click on gross profit margins, what I want to show you here is that, yes, it was at 70.1% in the previous quarter, and it's been on a, a steady uh, trip up 70.1, 74.0, 76.0, 78.1. And so it coming in this quarter at 75.1 is a reversal. It's down 3,300 basis points, which is still an incredibly good gross margin. Make no mistake about it. Now, that, that contraction in the gross margin could have to do with new products that have been ramping up and aren't yet fully optimized, like Blackwell. It could have to do with just the normal fact that they can't charge these prices forever. But it's worth noting that the valuation is based on it, perhaps an assumption that these gross margins can stay above 70%. And if they can't, that could be part of why the stock is trading down after hours. Now, management did say that anticipation for Blackwell, the new AI chip, is incredible. The samples are shipping to partners and customers now, and they also called out Spectrum X Ethernet for AI and NVIDIA AI Enterprise Software as two products that are already achieving significant scale. The company returned 15.4 billion to shareholders in repurchases and dividends. They have 7.5 billion left on repurchases. They added another 50 billion to that approval. And that would, even though that's $57 billion, that is only gonna cancel out about 2% of shares outstanding. So it happens when the company is as highly valued as it is right now. What about guidance? Well, management guided for 79% growth in the uh, current quarter, which is ahead of analyst estimates. So that being ahead of analyst estimates, maybe the market was assuming a larger beat, but also maybe they're looking at those gross margins that are contracting. For the full year, no guidance was given. Wall Street's expecting a doubling of revenue. I would not be surprised to see these revised upwards moving forward. So overall, when it comes to NVIDIA, look, for any other company, the, the stock would be going through the roof right now. It's just that this is the third or fourth quarter in a row where they've had results like this that just boggle one's mind. Tell someone a year ago that NVIDIA reported what they did, and they tell you you're crazy, that that wasn't even possible. But they'd also say the same thing about the company's $3 trillion price tag, which is why shares could be retreating right now. Moving forward, I would say the number one thing to keep your eye on is just any commentary on the traction of Blackwell. Of course, that will show up in revenue as well. Keep an eye on data center growth versus everything else. If something else can start moving up, I'm not expecting it to, but people don't really have their eye on that ball. Third, and I hope I made this super clear, gross margins matter. And fourth, just keep an eye on those capital returns. I'm not sure whether buybacks right now are a good idea or not, but we'll keep an eye on it. Now, I don't own the stock, so I'm not going to give it a moat direction or a thesis. But what I am going to do is go back to finchat.io and just talk a little bit about valuation. So if we look at valuation right now, this is NVIDIA's forward PE ratio of about 42. That is right in line with where the company has been over the last three years. Not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still growing triple digits right now. Uh, and if we look at the price to free cash flow, trading about 49, 50 times forward, forward free cash flow, excuse me, about in line with where it's been. Again, not cheap. Uh, we can also do a reverse discount of cash flow analysis on this company. Now, if we do, we type the ticker symbol in here. And what we want to do is put in what the company's trailing free cash flow is. Now, right now, believe it or not, they've generated $46.8 billion in free cash flow over the last 12 months. If we give them a normal terminal growth rate, normal discount rate, and we check today the price right now, which is about 119. This says 126 because the markets are closed, but we want to make these two match or at least make this green number be 119. So to do that, we say, okay, that means that mm, we're looking at, there we go. Free cash flow has to grow by 24% per year over the next 10 years, 24% per year over the next 10 years. Now, what would that mean if it actually happened? It would mean that NVIDIA in 2034 was generating about 420 
billion dollars in free cash flow. Now, I think it's fair to adjust those margins down because if we come back here and we want to look at, well, what kind of free cash flow margins does the company have historically? I think what we would see is it might be better to assume that the company has, let's say, a 35% free cash flow margin. Well, if they had a 35% free cash flow margin, that would give them $33.7 billion in free cash flow. And we'd have to raise this growth rate up to say not quite 30, maybe 28%, somewhere between 28 and 29%. <laughs> Excuse me, because we have optimized for NVIDIA's free cash flow now, in theory, we have what the revenue needs to grow per year moving forward over the next 10 years to justify this stock price. And if we look at this and we pull it forward, remember we said about 28, 29%, and right here, they're expected to grow well above that over the next couple of years. The big problem, of course, is that this is a cyclical company. And so the question is, how long will this cycle last? Well, if you've got the answer to that question, then I don't know what you're watching me for because you've got all the information you need to make a decision. The big deal here is, is how long will the cycle last and how powerful is NVIDIA's moat? Because that moat is the thing that's going to keep those margins, both the gross margins and the free cash flow margins high. Now, speaking of moats, tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time, I'm going to have a free webinar, a free investing masterclass on the five moats that every investor must no, you can register by just clicking the second link in the show notes below. It'll be about a half hour presentation and then we'll have about much time for Q&A after that. So if you're interested in learning about moats, absolutely free. You can register using that link. If you can't make it, it'll be recorded and we'll send you a recording so long as you register. So let me know what you think of NVIDIA's earnings below, what you think of the company's valuation, what you think of the company's moat. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up the next time that NVIDIA reports earnings. Until then, Brian, out.